Hello, and welcome to The Adrian Ross Show, a product of the BMG Network. So glad you're tuned in at thebmgnetwork.com, the BMG Network's YouTube channel, or a major podcast platform. It's time for another exemplary episode. So here we go. Well, hello, and I am so glad that I have my three guests on the Adrian Ross show. And we're gonna be talking about something that I believe is going to be a very a very significant episode for many people, because I know that there are a lot of people out there who, who love to write. I know that there are people out there who want to write a book. And I know that because I know some stats that I'm gonna get into shortly pertaining to the desire people have to actually write a book. And so I'm so grateful that I have today two published authors and one aspiring author. And through the course of our conversation, you're going to hear what their books are about, what their themes are about, what, you know, what drove them to write, and maybe, maybe even some of the process of that and, um, and maybe what the next steps are, particularly for one of our guests, who is still, um, she's written, but she's going to still, uh, she still has to publish that book. One of the things I don't talk about a lot on the podcast is the fact that I have written three books and um, maybe we'll talk about that a little later, but I do, I have a heart for writing and a heart for people who have a message that they want to share. And um, like I did in my three books, and maybe we'll get to that before it's over, but I'm not the subject today. <laughs> okay, my guests are. The first thing I want to do is have my guests introduce themselves, and then we'll get into seeing wherever this conversation will lead us. So I'm going to start with, um, oh my goodness, my sister from another mister. Um, you may remember uh, Miss Kia Cordell, Mrs. Kia Cordell. She was on my birthday episode, and that was a fun episode. If you didn't see it, go back a couple of weeks and check that out. And I was getting personal for my birthday, right? So uh, Kia, would you just introduce us to you? first. Hey, hello, everyone. I'm Kia Cordo, and um, I have published a, a book. I'm in the process of writing um, a sequel, and I'm also a novel. I have been teaching high school students, middle school and high school students for the last 21, 20 plus years, 21 years, and um, I enjoy writing. I teach English and um, global perspectives, but I'm also a pastor's wife and, um, and have a prophetic call and, and I love the Lord. And I've learned uh, growing up in the church, I've learned a lot. I've seen a lot of um, different things, you know, God do some amazing things and just seeing the faithfulness and the goodness of God. And, and, um, and he's given me the, uh, the gift of gab, if you will, and uh, sometimes allows me to pen that down. And so I'm excited about, you know, this next chapter in, um, in my life and in my walk with the Lord and just being able to share with, um, with other people, um, especially women and, and, uh, you know, just promoting that, or maybe not necessarily promoting, but really, uh, I guess promoting. That yeah. <laughs> I guess we'll go back to promoting. Yeah, go back to that word. Better word. That you know, God is not only in control, but He loves us intensely and immensely. And um, and for the just that call for women in this hour to um, realize their giftings and their abilities and their capabilities and and what God has for them is um, something that's in my heart to do. Wonderful. Well, I'm glad you're here. And Ms. LaKenya Taylor, what about you? I'm LaKenya Taylor and I'm author of about of seven books. And I'm a pastor's wife as well. And I have a mission to help children and adults when it comes to financial literacy. And so I love uh, sharing uh, on financial literacy. I have done so for 12 and a half years. I'm also uh, certified. Uh, so I have my FPQP, which allows me to teach uh, finances. And then also I have my CRPC, where I'm a retirement planning counselor as well. So I can take a person from A to Z uh, in their finances. Plus, I'm an accountant. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> an accountant of 15 and a half years. Mm -hmm. And so actually, I will be uh, tomorrow starting a class uh, here locally where I'm teaching on bookkeeping and um, 
and QuickBooks. So I'll be teaching a class on that. Um, so enjoy uh, the gifts that God has given me. I do have a prophetic call as well. Uh, just love God, love people. And here currently, you know, just um, love serving others. And so that's just my the thing I like to do. <laughs> that's wonderful. Listen, I'm in the company of all these prophetic people. I, I can read really <laughs> the word right about now. Thus said the Lord. No, no free to release it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, praise God. Okay. Lakeisha Blissett, why don't you introduce yourself to us? All right. I'm Lakeisha Blissett and I am um, just getting my feet wet with this author business. And um, <laughs> I got my book wrote, but just trying to actually, I guess, get it published basically. And I just have a heart for women and um, of all ages and just be an encouragement to them and just giving them hope and um just want them to see their actual beauty in the Lord and that we don't have to hide it or cover it up with, you know, worldly things like, you know, it's just so much more. And so I just like being an encouragement to other women. And that's my heart posture. Yes, that's, that's one where I love to serve. And so yeah. Yeah, and just a mom of three and that's me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh and we we both go to church together. Oh, and so uh, we have that connection. And then I always want to say Mrs. of Kenya, even though I'm older, her birthday is the day after my birthday, but not <laughs> the same year, right? I'm older and, um, but she's the pastor's wife. So I just always want to say Mrs. Kenya. but may I just call you Kenya today? That's fine. Okay. I'm not sure you're saying Miss Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have the connection that her husband's name is Adrian, <laughs> Pastor Adrian. So that's pretty cool. But anyway, he yeah. spells it differently. <laughs> okay. And, um, okay. So, so wonderful. So I have to, I want to ask you this. Um, and again, I, I want to have this conversation. What made you want to write a book? Let me share these statistics first with you. Okay. I don't know if you heard, heard these statistics, but this is the last that I've heard. 81% of people say they want to write a book. Keep, keep this in mind. 81% say, yeah, I want to write a book. Of those 81%, 2% actually start. Mm. And of that 2%, 3% complete the book. 3% of the two. Yeah. And so that means 97% do not complete the book. So again, 81% say they want to. Of the 81%, only 2% even start. Of that 2% who start, only 3% complete. And that's 97% who do not complete the book. So kudos here to LaKenya and to Kia who have completed the book. And kudos to you too, Lakeisha, because you are in the 1%. Right. Well, you were the 81% who said of that. You were the 2% who started. <laughs> and you, we got to get you to that. Three percent right. who complete. Now you have completed, but it's not published. Right. So I think that that's included in that. So you're you you're halfway there, sister. You're halfway there. Yeah. Okay. So why why write a book? Why why write a book here? Well, for me, it was just something the Lord's put in my heart. I have I've always had a lot to say, according to my mama. So <laughs> she, she ain't lying. <laughs> Had a lot to say. And, um, you know, like um, our other wonderful guests here, I, um, you know, I love to serve and I saw the need in the body of Christ and in the, in the world for women to be bold and, um, and just for people to find their place in uh, their place in the world. And that really means you know, in other words, their place in God and how do, how do they fit in God's kingdom? And, you know, and we can minister one-on-one -on -one to people, obviously, and hopefully we do that by our lives, wherever we go, you know, we are, our lives are our testimony. We are the written epistle of the, of the, of the word. Um, but then how can we get that out to more people? And so I guess it's been on my heart to say, you know, Lord, you know, you give me something to write, I'll put that down. And, and, and I just really, I wasn't sure how these projects were coming, but the Lord just started dropping some things in my heart and my spirit. And I just started writing and I, you know, and I've always, I've always been a writer um, from, you know, for as long as I can remember. Um, I used to love to draw. I, well, I enjoy drawing and I, and I enjoy art. I wasn't very good at it, but writing, I could sink my teeth into. 
Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and so that, that aspect came naturally. And so couple that with serving and, you know, and there was a book and just the, you know, the drive, you know, encouragement from amazing people who've written and said, yeah, go for it. It can be done. So, you know, and that's definitely. So you got a message and you want to reach as many people as possible. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. And one on one. Kenya, what about you? Why write a book or seven books in your case? Uh, similar to Kia, just, you know, the Lord put it on my heart. Also, I kind of knew the process since, uh, you know, my son, remember, he was he's the motivator for all of us to write books in my, in my household since we all have uh, published books. Um, but uh, he was an inspiration. And then with my son, you know, being very good in uh, English and uh, editing and all of that, that helped out as well. But um, a lot of it had to do with I wanted women. The first book I wrote is called My Dress is Black, Never Red. So it's about. It's right here. Oh, yeah. She has the book. <laughs> I've read, I've read yes. three of her books. Yeah. Um, My Dress is Red. My Dress is Black, Never Red. Yeah. And right. so that book, you know, is about uh, a lady that's in red and she hates the color red uh, mm -hmm. because of the financial aspect of it. So I knew that. Uh, I've, you know, since I've uh, volunteered my time to share on financial literacy, I knew that many were struggling with that issue. And so I wanted to reach out and help. So that began the journey of me writing, but uh, just the passion behind it. And, um, but I never enjoyed writing except poetry. That was the only thing I used to like writing was poetry. And so I, I'm not sure you'll get a very large book out of me, but... <laughs> <laughs> like a novel or anything like that. But um, I do like to share and, and um, especially I have a book, books on faith as well, uh, even for children. So uh, finances and, and faith is where it's at for me. And you want to reach as many people as possible. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, Lakeisha, yes. why, why did you decide to write to tell your story? It would be along the same lines as well. Like God just placed it on my heart. And like, as it, um, when I was going through that little process or period or whatever, when he kept on like pressing it more and more on my heart, like, Hey, I'm talking to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it was like, like people, people are all is for some reason, people always want to come talk to me and stuff. And it seemed like people kept telling me their story and they felt so like it might be somebody I didn't even know like they just felt so relaxed and calm with telling me like their story and felt like I could help them and I'm like okay I really need to like in like me, me like sitting there talking to them it like encouraged them and gave them hope and it was like the Lord was just saying like I want you to tell your story you know to give these people hope you know that's what mm. I'm speaking that's to. Good. yeah you know I was gonna save this but since you use the term hope. I want to share a sample of what you have written okay. um, because it is centered around hope. And um, so let's let's just take a look and then I'll just ask you to, to elaborate on this. I'm gonna not, I'm just gonna read a portion. You wrote, living in this community gave me a personal invitation into hardship beyond my control. The hurt began as a child when I witnessed a divorce with no explanation. More hurt piled on top of this when I was robbed of my innocence. Hurt told me to shut up. It told me I was promiscuous. The hurt thundered in my head, telling me I was only a poor little Southern side girl who was a minority and didn't matter to anyone. Hurt told me I was ugly, stupid, and alone. Hurt told me I wasn't capable of being successful, so I just had to settle. So I listened and agreed. And then down a little bit, you said, so when hope told me I was enough in Jesus Christ, I didn't understand or believe it. I was only familiar with my island view of normal where hurt was my really good friend. How does this, how does this come together with your, with your book? How is this centered to your book? So, um, I guess ooh, I gotta take that. Away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But so, as a young child, my mom and my dad separated, and they—I was more closer to my dad. 
And so with them separating and nobody explained that to me, that hurt. And then we stayed in on a bad side of town, basically. And staying in that community, it was like, you know, it's like you get no love. It's like you cut off from the world, you're looked down on. And it like just all of that just together. And my dad left and he was my hero. He was my everything. And you take that from me. And I'm in this area where, you know, where all you see is all you see, you that's all you know. And it's like just hurt, 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 hurt. And it's like nobody's talking about nothing. You can you can't say anything basically. And so it's like, okay, so all of that's just sitting in me and sitting in me and sitting in me and I'm ready to explode, but I I don't have nowhere to vent. Mm. And so, I don't know. How do you get from that kind of hurt to hope? So years, years of sitting in it and then finally, you know, God blessing me to cross paths with people and them telling me their story or me seeing different than what I once seen when I, you know, was younger or when I was in situations that I shouldn't have been in. And so that tugging on me, like there is better, there is better. Cause that's all I seen when I'm saying Island View was what was in the community, what I seen, what I knew. So what I knew is what I did and people uh-huh. talked about me, but how can you talk about me when this is all I know? So when slowly people start coming into my lives, like, hey, let me tell you about Jesus, or, you know, I'm seeing other community, nicer communities, like, hey, you know, what's this? And how can you get this? I want this. Uh And so that gave me hope. And so just little by little, you know, God showing me this, all the puzzle pieces came together and it was like, okay, I want, I want this more. And so how can I get this more? So that kept on tugging on me for the hope that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And because I have the, the privilege of being in the midst of um, two, uh, two other people in ministry here, I got to ask you, is this the mess? Is this a message that people need to hear? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. It's a story that needs to be told. Yeah. Cause I know, and I, and I asked them of that because I know when you pastor, you hear all kinds of stories <laughs> and you hear, they talked about having a heart for women as well. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted you on here as well, Lakeisha, because it's so important that you realize that you, it's not that you just have a story. Yeah, you have a story, but it's a story that needs to be told because other people, other people need the hope. They're, they're stuck in the hurt like you were, you know, and you expressed yourself so, so passionately, you know. All right, Kia, tell us about your book, the title of the book and, you know, some, some main takeaways of your book and, you know, the theme really. Okay. Well, it's called Just Breathe Again. And um, main theme. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I've got my copy, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Right. Um, and, and it's really, even by the cover, it's really a reminder that um, one touch from God and one breath um, one moment of God's breath upon our lives is not enough um, that we have to continually go back. And so my um, cover was, um, you know, it's pretty simple, but the, the sticky note reminder on the refrigerator is this, okay, just, just take a breath. And, uh, and so that's kind of where that comes from. But the, so that, that's really the theme. And um, the, um, I, I begin it with the story. I was, um, had been leading worship for many years and, um, and just, you know, involved in ministry for many years. And it, you know, for anybody who's involved in ministry, it doesn't end. Um, and it's, you know, almost frowned upon to take a break. You know, we know that we need to take breaks. We need to have, you know, to step back and say, okay, God refill, but you know, we don't always do that. And so I had stripped my voice quite a bit. And I got to the point where I couldn't sing. And that was so devastating to me. And so, um, you know, fast forward a few years um, later, I was taking vocal lessons um, with a vocal coach, just trying to rebuild and seeing what was wrong. And it just was not clicking. And then all of a sudden, um, we were in, um, we were in the middle of this lesson, beautiful um, Colombian lady who is just my, again, my sister from another mister, mister, I love her. 
and um, and she was just so full of joy and and I was just getting frustrated and she said, okay, pastora, she, you know, in her Spanish accent, she's pastora, just what's going on? What's happening? I'm like, I'm frustrated. I'm not getting enough air. It's just not working. And she said, just breathe again. And, I, and, and, it, and it was just like a light bulb came on. And I'm like, what? What do you mean? And she said, just breathe again. And, and I started laughing and I couldn't stop laughing. And out of that laughter, God healed my vocal cords. And, wow. um, and, and that experience, and I'm like, are you kidding me? It's that simple. She's like, yeah, it's just, you know, you run out of breath, you just breathe again. It's not, you know, it's not complicated. And I thought, you know, and the Lord spoke to me and say, that's the name of the book. And I thought, wow, okay, this is so exciting. And so, and I begin the book with that because um, it was a moment of, you know, years of frustration. You know, I love to sing everywhere I go. I sing, I'm in Walmart, I'm singing, I'm in, you know, Target, I'm singing. I'm you always know, yeah. cool, teaching and all of a sudden I'll break out in song or, or, you know, I mean, just, you know, the Lord is just, is just, I encourage myself with the Lord yeah. and I just love to sing to the Lord. So, um, and so, um, when when that was taken when that was you know the enemy tried to just use that against me you know i was i felt so defeated i'm like lord this is you know this is a tool for you what you know did i do did i do anything bad with that you know what what did i do you know and um and so when that when that happened i knew that you know just that that frustration that i felt and that um um you know just the the thought that god is he expects us to okay you know i filled you up now go you know, moving on to the next person, you know, where it's not an assembly line, our relationship with God is not on an assembly line. And wow. so the themes in this book is just, um, you know, it, it's not very long, but I think it was, um, you know, it's exactly the way the Lord put it in my heart to, to pen. And um, that when we take that breath of God, he fills us up and he gives us grace is where it says that his grace is sufficient every single day and sometimes we forget to take a breath and I, and I thought you know as I was thinking about the, that process you know we don't think how to breathe we just do it we, you know, we don't think and there's you know we we breathe you know more than 10,000 times in, in one day and and we don't think about that yeah uh, we don't we don't it's not a process we think about and then, you know sometimes we get into that mode of um you know lord you know what how can i how can i set the atmosphere so that i can be full how can i and you know and obviously some so how can we so how can we how what does that look like that breathing again just recognizing i have um in and I'll, I'll go to my book i'm gonna have to put my glasses on so i can remember all the chapters <laughs> <laughs> but um so i um highlight several things in here and the first thing is just recognizing that god is who he is who he says he is mm -hmm. um, and let's see and in our recognition of of where that first breath our first uh experience with the lord is that first breath and then how to recognize god and how he's moving and how he speaks to us is that second thing and then to just let go and live you know, and how do we go from, you know, day to day, moment to moment, day to day, week to week, month to month, and year to year. It's just, you know, incremental breaths of, you know, reminding us, you know, God is walking right beside us. He, we are in the safety of his arms, um, unless we walk out from that. And if we do, he's always right there, you know, and, and I think I, I share a few different experiences, encounters that I've had with God. And, um, you know, and, and I can reach back and draw on those encounters, but he says, you know, my, 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 again, my grace, grace is sufficient for the day. So that means he has fresh, he has a fresh breath for us every single day. Yeah. Um, we only need to just say, Lord, I I'm here and I'm ready to, to meet with you. I'm ready to access this breath. So I don't have to breathe on my own, you know, and I think a lot of times um, that we, in our walk with the Lord and our walk just in life is that we feel like, okay, I'm strong enough. I'm positioned enough. I've got it together because I'm supposed to have it together. Well, okay. Um, but we know that our strength is, doesn't come from ourselves, you know, and we can only, and when we think that we can only last, but so long on that strength, right? It right. only, we can, I mean, the Bible says that it is impossible to, it, without faith, it is impossible to please God, or, or I can do all things. I can, we can do all things. Nothing is impossible. Well, we can live without him. So, you know, that scripture says, but if we want, you know, God moving through our lives, if we want the destiny of God, we better walk with him. And so yeah. otherwise, otherwise we're like the living dead. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So we can do things, but you know, are those right. the things 
want to be doing. You know, is it these? Is it these things? They're, yeah, there are good things, but we want God things. Absolutely. One, one of the things you wrote in this book that you said throughout the scriptures, David is known by God as a man after God's heart. David actively sought the heart of God, and therefore he had the heart of God. There is no other way to commune with him but through worship. There is no way to touch him and be touched by him but through worship. There is no shortcut. Amen. Amen. Sometimes I have to read it. I'm like, remind myself. <laughs> yeah. No, for real. So that sounds right. right for ourselves. But what I hear in that and what I'm hearing and what you're saying is intentionality. Yes. You know, we want God to throw us down and sit on top of us and put a do that our bigger brothers and sisters used to do and pin our arms down. And, and make us breathe in. Right. But I, if I'm hearing you right, he's accessible all the time, but we have to take that breath. That's right. We so who are, you, who are you targeting? Who are you targeting in this book? Who is this speaking to? Well, anyone. I mean, anyone. I said my heart is, is for women. I think that there are... Um, because our nature is to do everything, to be the Wonder Woman, or to be the, you know, I've got to take care of the house, the, the you know, so I've got to work, I've got to take care of kids, I've got to handle this, i got to, you know, make sure the cats, you know, yeah. the cats, yeah, right, cats or fish or whatever you have, um, you know, neighbors, you know, I mean, typically things that, that women, you know, that women do, we are, we are inherently nurturers, and we want it, solve problems and, and, um, and, um, you know, but in our solving problems, we usually leave our, put ourselves towards the end, but, you know, we need to be atten intentional about, um, our relationship with the Lord because we need him. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. Um, Ms. LaKenya, your, you have uh, a passion and a calling, I'm sure for a lot of things, but I'm thinking about mm -hmm. the financial aspect you know, and I want to start by reading something first from the book, My Dress is Black, Never Red. And then I'll uh, and then I'll hand, hand it over to you because I'm curious as to how this fits into to everything here with this book. It says Lisa was also a believer and they were able to discuss the spiritual aspect of money and its place in the church. Laura found healing from her past with family and the financial failures. Um, seems basic, but I think it's huge here. Lisa was also a believer and they were able to discuss the spiritual aspect of money and its place in the church. I'm assuming that you feel that there's something spiritual about money, which is why you give yourself to it so much. <laughs> What's this with this financial theme you got going? And how does it relate to spirituality? Well, you know, I wrote two books on that, one for kids and one for adults, you know, using that that uh, perspective about tithes and offering. Um, and so, you know, the, the children's book that I did is called Two Dimes. Yes. And it's teaching kids how to give to God first. Mm -hmm. So in the one in uh, the, the book that you're talking about right now, um, I wanted to bring in the spiritual aspect of it, even though on a normal basis, I am always talking about the natural aspect of finances, but I always, even when I teach financial classes, I always bring up the spiritual aspect. Uh, whenever I talk about budgeting, I use tithes and offering, and I say that is an expense but it's a glorious expense, <laughs> you know, to, to encourage people in that. But, um, you know, it's something that we do first. So I always include that. Um, God gives me different insights uh, on uh, the spiritual aspect of finances uh, that we have to serve God uh, over money. Because <laughs> money can, of course, we know from the scriptures, that mammon, if you use the word mammon, uh, that we can't serve God in mammon. We either have to serve one or the other. And so in serving God, we have to make sure that we put our money uh, first towards God because wherever our heart is, that's where our treasure is. Now, one thing the Lord told me specifically, he said people it will teach the body of Christ about the 90%. He said, I want you to focus on the 90%. Mm -hmm. Many churches um, 
are always focusing on the 10%. Mm -hmm. He said, if you can help get my people in alignment with the 90%, they won't have any struggle wow. in the 10 or anything else that I asked them to give because they are now in a different uh, mode of how they use their money because they will learn that, you know, everything belongs to God. He's only asking for the 10% and, you know, the, the tithe and the offering, but everything belongs to God. And so um, being good stewards is very, you know, very important to the Lord. Um, he has shared so much with me about it. You see it in the scripture. It's mentioned so many times about money in the Bible. So that's where I'm coming from when I use uh, talk about it spiritually. Mm -hmm. That's deep. You know, that's, that's really deep. It's like we, the 10%, the 10%, the, and, and then of course the offering on top of that. But like right. you said, we would do what we did with the, we would get the 90% in line and everything would be okay. Let me, let me switch over to the natural though. Cause that was the spiritual. And this might seem like an odd question, but considering um, our, I mean, we're all black on here, right? Not that this is just for black folks, but this is, we are black here. And Lakeisha, you had talked about kind of this being on the South side and then seeing other, um, other ways that people had lived. And I don't know, I know you do a lot of teaching, Lakenya. Have you, have you noticed a difference in, in black folks in terms of teaching our families about finances? Yes, uh, there, of course, is a drastic uh, difference, and it seems to come out when I first start the class, because I, you know, I, I used to teach the personal finance class. I still teach it now, uh, but every time I brought up about where do you believe the way you spend your money, where do you believe that came from? So talking more about, uh, what's the word I forgot I used uh, for that class? But anyway, it's just pretty much taking people back to start seeing where they learn the learned behavior, you know, like the financial, uh, the, the way that you learn how to spend money, the way that you overspend, where did you get that from? Or being stingy or being uh, where, like one guy told me, I was kind of, it was interesting. He said that he was afraid to purchase socks. He was afraid to use his money to purchase socks. And what he would do is just soap all of his socks instead of going and buying more. And I'm like, what is that all about? You know, like people are really dealing with some serious issues. Mm -hmm. And he was afraid because he, he was like, if I go buy more socks, he said that his, I guess his dad or somebody used to take the socks from him. Um, and he was always trying to hold on to what he had and he, he didn't want to use money for more. I didn't get the full gist of that, but just even him sharing that, that he was afraid to spend money on socks. You can tell that there's something deep, deeply rooted there that need to be broken. And so uh, every time we have that discussion in the class about learned behaviors, where did you, you know, where did this come from? Most of the people in the class are crying. Wow. It takes them so when we're talking about finances, we're talking about something because when you talk about finances, it's as if, and I'm just using this as an example, as if someone's naked uh, because it's a very personal thing for people. Um, you know, people don't like to talk about it because they don't want to be embarrassed about, you know, where they are in debt and other things. And so it becomes, and it becomes, it start opening you up and to be able to really see where did this start so that we can help you get out of this situation and get free. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a lot to do with that. I'm sorry, I keep taking it back to spiritual. Now that you brought no, it up. It, 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 is all, <laughs> it is spiritual, even though we're talking right. you know, obviously yeah. parallel. Anybody want to say anything on that? Um, I will say. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Lakeisha. Oh, okay. So I would say like growing up in the South Side community, I was like money, like I'm watching my mom work two and three jobs and like trying to get it by any means necessary. So it was like um, we didn't have much. And so um, when I got older and I started working on my own and then, you know, once I accepted Christ into my life and I started meeting people and um, I had someone who came along beside me and was like, um, hey, let me show you the ropes and stuff. And um, 
so when I got paychecks, it was like she was trying to help me, like, you know, put, save and this is what you need to put back for save and this is what you need to do here. And I'm looking at her crazy, like, and th- it's just to show you too how, you know, God can put somebody in your life and you can totally mess that relationship up because I could have messed it up. I didn't, but she trying to help me and I'm looking at her like, what you mean? I want to go spend this money. I, I, ain't this. I want this. But, but yeah, it was a blessing that she helped me to save. So when emergencies did come up, you know, I had money to, you know, cover like a flat tire or something, you know, like that. Yeah. But And it was like a foreign, it was like a foreign concept again, because yes. I, I asked, I asked, to learn it. yeah, I asked that question. I'm going to get to you, Kia, um, your, resp- your comment, but I asked that question because, uh, I don't know, a few years ago, I asked a couple people what do you remember your parents teaching you as a child about finances? And it was interesting, the parents who actually talked to their children about budgeting and they saw them versus the people, it wasn't a conversation. And it was, oh, you get your income tax return? Let's you just let's get some sneakers. You know, it's that instant gratification for a lot of people that causes the bondage that many of us only know the bondage. And now I say us, I ain't talking about me because I'm not put, I'm not speaking that of my life. Kia, what were you gonna say? I was saying, yeah, that's exactly right. I um, remember having a conversation when we were younger with my brothers, looking at my parents and just, you know, the long hours that they worked and and just trying to make, you know, you know, work, work from paycheck to paycheck. And then when there was plenty, it was just like, okay, you know, Christmas is coming. We're going, you know, my dad used to always take us to New York City, which I appreciate. But I also knew how hard he worked um, yeah. in investments and in teaching us, um, you know, how to, how to um, invest in stocks and things like that. But then there was always, you know, that more debt to debt to income ratio. And we, you know, we would look at each other, my brothers and I and say, we're never going to be like that. And lo and behold, as soon as college comes and they, you know, and they yeah. give you that, the credit cards, you could just easily get, you know, all that goes out the window. It's a setup. It's, it's a, a setup, setup. For sure. For sure. And you know, and, and we can look back and say, that's what they were talking about. That's what they went through, but, you know, being stubborn. So um, that's powerful that, um, you know, that like, can you take that, those principles and say, okay, where, you know, evaluate where you spend all this, because, you know, we are quick to um, do a little bit of retail therapy when we really need some God therapy. (laughs) We need to breathe. We need to breathe (laughs) again. (laughs) Exactly. We need to breathe again. This is, I think that is so important. And one, I have, I have two dimes which I, is just phenomenal. I don't know. I don't know where it is. I'm like, where is that? <laughs> but this was the, this is the new one. Mm-hmm. And I, when I posted about it online on Facebook, people were like, Oh my goodness, what such a great idea. Cash bug. I love the illustrations. The, the same person illustrated this who illustrated the last one. Yes. Yeah. But cash bug learns about needs and wants. And people were saying, oh my goodness, this is such an, you know, such an important thing to learn. Why did you write this one? I wanted to impact children. Uh, you know, I also have uh, went to schools and shared on finances as well. And I thought, what better way to impact our children than by uh, giving them financial literacy at an early age? Uh, it covers ages uh, K through fifth grade. And it also has uh, worksheets in the back of the book to assist children in, you know, like if they receive an allowance or like, you know, when I did the book signing on Saturday, kids that are entrepreneurs, they're making money and, you know, it's showing them how to do, how to handle their finances and choosing between wants, needs and wants. Now, we know that adults are still facing that, that question pretty much on a daily basis is this a need or is this a want that I'm purchasing? <laughs> you know, we're still dealing with that and adults are still struggling with this. Mm-hmm. And so why not share it with our children? Uh, one of the little girls on Saturday, she said, oh, I'm going to give it to my little brother so that he can read it. He likes reading. I said, that's great, but you should read it too. <laughs> and she said, well, they're covering this in school right now. I said, but you should read it too. And I explained why. And she just kind of lit up. And she was like, I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it. Oh, that's and great. I, I yeah. said, even us as adults have issues with needs and wants. And um, 
when I wrote the book, I looked online and it said that it is uh, learning about needs and wants is the very first principle as it relates to saving and financial literacy. So that's the core basis. And so this is a book series that I am writing. The next one is on saving. Then after that, entrepreneur. And then the last one is investing because mm -hmm. cash book is learning about needs and wants. And then we'll go towards saving and we'll see how saving is just not it you know, in order to bring in more money. And then the entrepreneurship comes in. And then uh, after making money, now it's time to invest that money. Mm. All right, the whole gamut. <laughs> um, as, we, as we wind down, I want to, uh, to turn back to you, Kia, on Just Breathe Again. And I want, I, want you to, I want you to be able to tell people where they can get your book. But I also want you to tell us, you know, there are people who are listening. They need to breathe again they know they need that they're choking or out of breath or I need some air in my life. Even if it is their financial situation, even if it is the home situation they're living in, going through parents who have a divorce or go, having gone through a divorce, whatever the situations are in our lives, um, we need the Lord. We need to know how to, we need to breathe again. So I want you to address those who will be watching or listening and tell them why they should get this book, okay? And then where they can get this book. Absolutely. And any, yeah, anything else you want to share about the book? Okay, great. Um, when life is too hard to handle, when um, if you're experiencing um, just that suffocation of, you know, I your to-do list, your didn't do list, your I wish I never did list, um, and, <laughs> and how in the world am I going to do this? Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, my book encourages you to stop and say, Lord, touch me now. Lord, I need to see you. Lord, I need to know you. Lord, I need to um, understand that you are with me, that you are for me, that you are not against me, that you created me and all of my and, and everything about me that you have, the, you have your finger on the pulse of my life. Mm -hmm. And with that comes your responsibility, Lord, to pour into me, to breathe in me so that I can keep walking, so that I can get up every day, so that I can um, get to the list I'm supposed to do and throw out the ones I'm not supposed to do um, and things of, those, of that nature. And, and just to continually walk with the Lord. You know, some things in life are, you know, so completely out of our control. Things yeah. just happen. The Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust. So, and things happen and there's nothing that we can do about that. And I think, um, you know, many times that we, you know, when we're, when we're faced with those types of challenges and difficulties, you know, we, we expect to have an answer. Sometimes there's no answer. There's just Jesus. And, oh. you know, and, you know, Jesus, hold my hand, Jesus, lead the way Jesus, you know, just, just, breathe so that I can take that next breath. So that I'm not walking around trying to, you know, my, with my lungs constricted, you know, what a weight that is. So if you're carrying, they're listening and you're, you're or watching and you're carrying that weight where you feel like something is just pressed upon your chest. I encourage you get the book. Yes. Um, yes. You can go to my website, Kia Cordeaux dot com. Um, it's on Amazon. You can also go to lulu.com um, and, and access it. You can go to Barnes and Noble. Mm -hmm dot com and access it as well and um and get the book it's a quick read but i believe it's a powerful read and it will help you just you know take that lift that burden off of your life lift that burden off of your chest and say you know what i can breathe you know it's my it's my it's the access god is giving me i've yeah. got access and so i i want you to know that you have access it doesn't matter where you've been what you've done what you haven't done where you haven't gone it, that's irrelevant it's irrelevant in the face of Jesus. That's good. That's really good. KiaCordeaux.com. It's K-I-Y-A. Cordeaux is C-O-R-D-E-A-U. And that's uh, a huge encouragement that people need to hear. Uh, Lakeisha, you have, where are you in this process of um, no pressure from any of us here, right? <laughs> but where are you in this process of getting this book into the hands of people? Do you have a, a title you're thinking of already? And where are we going from here, girl? The, pro the process of where I'm at now is I have it all rolled and uh -huh. all that good stuff. So just putting it in someone's hands that, or, you know, that can help me 
push it a little further from what I from what I know to do and um that's basically where I'm at. So how you whose hands are you looking for? What do you what do you, you do? I'm putting you on the spot. You know how I do, Lakeisha. Okay. Well, um uh probably in the hands of somebody that's not gonna strip my voice and try to sugarcoat it or um make it different or but keep my voice in it exactly what I have but you know I know that there's some things that needs to be like you know sometimes we could be too wordy and stuff like that but just keeping it authentic to where it touches the hearts of people and give them the hope that yes where I was trying to go with it Mm -hmm. okay so um do you have people in mind or not yet I, I I do not okay yeah all right. Well, you know, th- you know what I shared today, it's interesting because today is October 17th. Um, you shared that in a blog, October 18th, 2020, mm-hmm. 2020, October 18th. Oh my goodness. And that's something I, I didn't notice that at first, but I noticed it uh, um, before we came on. And so I want to encourage you, and I'm sure these ladies will also, because what we've heard is a message that needs to be heard. And it mm-hmm. matches up with what, what Kia is, is saying as well, as far as that breathing and that hope and all of that. And um, it's too good to keep to yourself, you know. So, um, Ms. Kenya, where can people find your book and what, why... Why and I'm going to deal with the financial aspect because that's what we've been talking about that that more uh, that theme that you have going in the in the series that you have going. So why should people buy this book and where? You should buy it so that you can help children learn financial literacy. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very important for it's it's really sad um, that you know our school is still struggling even though it's there you know it's came up a little bit in sharing financial literacy to some degree, but uh, we really need to start at home as well. You know, get a, get a book, learn, help the kids learn about needs and wants. It's a cute book. It has a little comedy in it. You know, it's, it's, it's a cute book, but it's also teaching them a principle that they'll never uh, not need. I'll say it that way. Yeah. Um, you'll always need to learn about needs and wants. And so what a better, what a great way to, um, bring this into your home uh, to other children that you know of. Even I'm trying to work with schools to get this book into the hands of the children as well. But you can get this book on amazon.com. You can get all of my books uh, that I've written, except for one that I'm uh, uh, kind of redoing right now. Right now, That one I sold out of because it's a, uh, a book called um, The Money Life. And it has every aspect of finances in it, everything about budgeting, credit, everything in it. And it has a budgeting tools in the back of it. It has saving tools, all kinds of information. And so everybody wanted that book when it came out. Um, but but uh, that's the only one I do not have on Amazon currently. But yes, go to Amazon, uh, get this book for your niece, nephew, everybody. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that they can learn. I have a passion for it. I'm not just I'm not here trying to make money, but also a portion of every everything that is uh, collected for my books do go towards my uh, mission for Padded. Uh, Padded is where we provide feminine hygiene products to women and girls in need of them. We've provided over 100,000 since 2017 to over 40 schools and six women's shelters or pantries. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, excellent. This is all such uh, such good stuff. You said something so important, Kenny. You said it needs to start at home. Um, mm-hmm. The schools do what the schools do, but we can't have the schools doing what we should be doing. That's right. And not only that, but I think the churches need to do more too. That's right. You know, and it's got to <laughs> be beyond standing up in the front and saying, okay, now it's time to return tithes to the Lord, you know, right. and uh, turn, you know, here's an envelope. I mean, it's got to be, there's, you know, people like you and not everybody can, can do what you do. You know, not everybody can teach that. Not everybody, have, not everyone has a grasp of that. So we need people like you, um, you know, sharing what you know. We need people like you, Kia, um, being there to minister 
mm-hmm. through a book and in person to women and other people. Because some men need to breathe too. Mm-hmm. That's Actually, right. some men would breathe more, <laughs> some women would breathe more easily. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I had some um, feedback from some men who really were excited to get it. So yeah. Yes, absolutely. So, so important. And then, of course, um, your story um, is you've got a lot to your story, Lakeisha. And I've been in um, like my Push Your Way to Purpose workshops with you before where you opened up and shared things. And so I know that there's such a story in there that's going to break chains for people, you know. And so we want to see you. um, You're already in the 81 percent who wanted to write a book. You already started the book. Right. And we want to get you across the, the finish line because there's so much there, so much more, even than one book, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, so, ladies, any final comments as I just say thank you for gracing us, the audience, and myself with your time and your talents and your anointing? Um, anything else before we say goodbye? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for having us. So I'm just going to say this, guys, gals, everybody, y'all need to get out there. You just breathe again by Kia Cordell. Cash bug learns about needs and wants by LaKenya. My dress is black, never red by LaKenya Taylor. (laughs) Also two dimes by LaKenya Taylor and go to amazon.com for both these ladies to see all that they have going on. And then Lakeisha, of course, will be praying for her to get that book out as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, ladies, for joining me on the Adrian Ross show. God bless you. What a great episode with great guests we just had. Lakeisha Blissett, Kia Cordell, LaKenya Taylor, amazing guests. And I know you got a lot out of it. I hope you also feel encouraged to get out there and get their books. You know someone, if not you, you know someone who needs to read these books. And I also hope that you're encouraged to write your book, to tell your story if you're among the 81% who feel drawn to write a book. I want to encourage you to get out there and get your story out. And as I mentioned on the show, I also have three books. I don't really talk about them, but I'm going to take a moment and do so right now. And I have an aunt and Aunt Alma, and she is absolutely hilarious. And I used to share all these things that she would say and post it on social media. And I would have people who would say to me, I want that saying on a t-shirt. I want it on a mug. And that's what I did. I hired an illustrator and we started selling t-shirts and mugs. And then people said, I want a book. And so then I had to hire a different illustrator and we ended up with two Aunt Alma books. The first one, the first one is called Aunt Alma, Raising a Little Hell and it's crossed out, Heaven on Earth, on Alma, hashtag on Alma, excuse me, because that's who she is on social media. Hashtag on Alma, Raising a Little Hell, Heaven on Earth. That was the first one. And the second on Alma book, which came a year later, is hashtag on Alma Unleashed, old, bold, and out of control. Hashtag on Alma Unleashed, old, bold, bold, and out of control. And these are illustrated and they are hilarious. And then I have my more serious book and that is um, Push Your Way to Purpose, how to get from where you are to where you're meant to be. I always call this my baby and it's filled with stories and my own experiences and it's about purpose how to get from where you are to where you're meant to be. Push your way to purpose. So those are my three books, but I also want to put this out there for you because I said, I want people who want to write to be able to write. So I have an online school, which I guess I haven't shared either. And it's called, it's at um, adrianrossacademy.com. So it's www.adrianrossacademy.com. And I have two courses that are there. One of them is with cost. One of them costs inexpensive for all that you get. It's called the 10 Surefire Steps to Writing Your Masterpiece. And with that, it's, you get PDFs, you get um, audio, you get video. 
So the PDFs allow you to fill to fill out things. The, the audio, obviously, if you like to listen on the go, like many people do with this podcast, you have that. And then you got the video with me right there and you can watch. But um, amazing. Um, the 10 surefire steps to writing your masterpiece takes you step by step to getting that book done. And then we also have a free course that's called Three Musts for All Great Writers. Three Musts for All Great Writers. That's absolutely free. Go to adrianrossacademy.com. So I wanted to share that with you. And thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Adrian Ross Show and our, and our wonderful, wonderful uh, guests. Get their books, soak it in and be blessed. Okay, please go to the bmgnetwork.com and listen to the other podcasts there. We are enlightening, engaging, informative, and of course, entertaining. Also go to a podcast platform like Apple Podcasts and please leave me a rating and review. Please subscribe and then get the word out by sharing with your friends. All right. Thank you so much again for tuning in. I will catch you on the next episode of the Adrian Ross Show. God bless you abundantly. The Adrian Ross Show was produced and edited in the BMG studio. The music was provided by Kevin McLeod. Find more episodes of The Adrian Ross Show at the bmgnetwork.com and major podcast platforms. Be sure to tune in regularly. You don't want to miss even one episode. <laughs>